Spain. Come to Spain for sun, sea, sand and snow. Can't believe it. it's February and Bentley have just launched the Bentley GTC you see here thinking that we'd get some fantastic weather and in the end we've ended up with snow. It's terrible in land so we thought oh we'll come down to the coast see what it's like. It's just as bad down here but the next stop we're going to carry on into the mountains and just see what we can find. But uh, first go in this car is the new V8. Um, character is so similar to the W12 it's unreal. Um, you hardly tell the difference. You're not feeling short change. They say it's 40% more economical. Well, we're going to find out today if that's really true. I suspect not. Um, I've got just on a cruise up here, we've got about 22, 23 to go and behaving very, very well just on a motorway cruise. So that's better. But I think once we head up in the hills, that might drop a bit. We'll find out. But snow, I can't believe it. That is the last thing we were expecting to find in February grill look at the grill it's black in the middle but it also has that finishing bar that's a sliver of chrome in the middle that says it's the v8 as do the sort of vents at the front they almost remind me of the lamborghini gallardo there's those sort of vents at the front look really good around the side wheels on this one are 21 inch and then that red badge in the middle says it's the v8 We've left the beach behind, but we haven't left the snow behind. Just to find out a bit more about this car. Um, still quite a heavyweight. They say it's 25 kilos lighter over the front axle with the new V8. Still leaves this one at 2,470 kilos, so two and a half tons of Bentley. They say it's the more sporting model. That's a lot of weight to be sporting. Um, the roof takes this one's about 170 kilos heavier than the coupe so it adds quite a lot of weight going for the GTC version. I keep thinking I probably should be driving it with the hood down but I don't think you would at minus one minus two and snowing so I think the roof is staying up all day as far as I'm concerned. You're sort of seeing when uh, road tests go bad and <laughs> this is one. I feel rather sorry for Bentley because I don't think this is what the GTC is made for. But having said that, Bentley does have fabulous heated seats and uh, you do feel super cosy in this thing. And of course it's four wheel drive, which if it gets any worse, it's gonna come in pretty useful. I'm sure it's nice here in the summer. just entering Spain again and been in France for a bit um, you can see there all the signposts but I'm at um, quarter tank there we are quarter tank and uh, we've covered 238 miles and a range of 70 so yeah not quite the eco paragon that um, perhaps Bentley like you to believe but 20 miles a gallon is still a lot more than you used to get out of the W12, which used to properly drink it. We used to, you know, I'd say 16, 17 on a journey like this. It's a bit better, but yeah, it's still not super economical. Damn me. This is not oh, what we what we expected at all. Coming come to Spain for a convertible launch. Yes. Oh, this is the top, yeah, isn't it? Just see what the top here is. Well, this surreal test continues. Top of the pass, 1,057 metres. Um, I have to admit that the Bentley was completely unfazed. Um, someone might sneer at four wheel drive, but um, it is mighty effective. We're not on snow tyres, which doesn't make matters very good, but um, even on these normal tyres, traction, not a problem. Just, just got to get down now. Out. You know, quite a nice thing about Spain in February at, um, when it's snow and it's minus seven. It's really quite quiet. You don't meet many people out. It makes life a lot easier. I'm going to get inside. Oh dear. <coughs> oh, that looks nice. Oh, heated seats, here we come. But it's seven hours since we last filled up. And uh, 277 miles, not quite the 800 kilometres that was claimed at the press conference last night. It's about 500 miles. 
just over half what was claimed, but I think that's pretty realistic. 19.2 to the gallon. And yes, fuel gauge well in the red. I have that, so I'll show it. There we go. There we are. Well in the red down there. Tiny little fuel gauge. So I reckon the reason this is actually 40% better than the other one is because the other one was really rubbish and this one's sort of average and that's how they got the 40% better with this one. But yeah, you're going to get 19, 20 to the gallon out of this car, not the 25, 26 that's promised by the, the, uh, the actual combined figure, the official figures. That lorry in the background is uh, extra delivery because they know some Bentleys are in town. There's quite a fleet around here. You have reached your destination. Thank you very much, dear. You've been a great help. you get to experience a car in all conditions like this. I've done, I've done nearly 500 miles now. They say they've improved the sat now, it's been driving as potty. Uh, I mean, it sort of seems to look, uh, I think a sort of tiny country lane is the same rating as a, as a big main road. It's just very peculiar. I sort of expect that to be better than that. But uh, there's lots to like about the car. Um, I just love the way its ability to completely shrug off anything we threw at it. The, you know, the four-wheel drive came into its own in the snow. Um, it's uh, it, it can just sort of cope with everything. It's a it's a all-season type of car, which I find very impressive. And then there's the build quality. Um, it just feels, you know, if, you, if there's still petrol in 100 years' time, then this car will be whatever, will be running up and down the road, I'm sure. Um, it's absolutely amazing on that front. I could sort of see if you, you know, say if this, this part of the world is suddenly hit by a tsunami, well, this car, you know, if left the handbrake on, it'll just be left exactly where it was when the water retreated, you know. It, it won't float, won't be one of those cars bobbing around, it'll be just down on the base waiting for the water to go and then it'll just start up and go off. It just has that feeling of invincibility about it. Another thing about this car um, is the price. You save £12,000 over the W12. Um, significant saving really, but it's still a £136,000 car this one. Um, that puts it, you know, direct rival to something like a Ferrari California, something like that. Um, I, I think it, the V8 over the W12, I just can't see the point in the W12. I'm really impressed with the way this V8 delivers its power. I don't feel short chains. Eight-speed gearbox, so it always seems to be in the right gear. Um, and that sort of maximises acceleration. It's 4.7, 4.8, I think, to 6 this one, 4.7 for the coupe. Um, but yeah, V8 is the way to go. I've never really liked the W12. It's a power plant rather than a really exciting engine. In fact, it's got 12 cylinders in material. It was the way it did with that down, low down torque. But then this one does it as well. Um, so in summary, this car, I admire, I admire it hugely, but I don't actually love it. The bit that's sort of missing in everything, it's, it covers so many bases so well. Um, the one thing that's missing, is a feeling of fun. Rivals like the Ferrari California and the Maserati Gran, Gran Cabrio, they're huge fun. Always seeing grey engines and just throw you down the road, but they, they are adjustable on the handling. You always know the rear drive and you just feel a bit of a you feel a bit of a hero in this one. This one just beats the car, the road into submission, and um, it delivers everything. But it just hasn't got that sense of fun. Apart from that, great car. Also remember, it's a convertible. If I slow down to 20 miles an hour, press a button. 
Presto. Oh. Presto. 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 I love the way as soon as you do this, the heating goes on to high. Uh, outside temperature is minus one. Might look lovely and sunny, but it's pretty chilly around these parts. I love the way the car instantly goes to high, it just knows it's a bit chilly. Oh, and I can feel the seat warmers are sort of coming through on six. And there you go, full convertible. And you get to hear that V8 rumble. The valves open as soon as you put it into sport. I don't like these paddles, you can manage any change, but they're right at the top, so you've got to have the wheel in just the right spot to be able to hit the paddles accurately. Very strange. Great noise. Right. Having too much fun, I've got a photographer I've left behind. Bentleys have always been V8, apart from the W12, they've always had a V8. I think it suits the car perfectly. This is for any budding uh, car photographers out there, this is the sort of thing you have to do. So, it's like lying in snow, yeah, it's, it's about sun. minus three. They promised me sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's saying he's promising him sun. I don't know where the sun's gone. It's a great job, car photography. It's a dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't get better.